All right, folks, here we go. If you haven't heard, and if I had to guess, there are a lot of people out there that are not familiar with the recent changes to the retirement list for this year, specifically to the Star Wars theme. Hello, everybody. My name is Jim with Wolf of Bricks. If you haven't done it already, please go ahead and like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps us out, and I greatly appreciate it. So there have been two big changes recently, and I don't want to, you know, use dramatics and say this changes everything, but I know for me personally, this is going to change the makeup of the inventory that I will be buying between now and the end of the year. I have already started to aggressively purchase Lego sets that are scheduled to retire uh, this year. Fortunately for me, I have not gone deep in any of these sets uh, that I'm about to share with you. Again, that does not mean that I'm not going to have to look at my plans between now and the end of the year to see which sets I'm going to buy and which sets I am not going to buy. So let's go through the Lego Star Wars sets that have been pushed out past 2024 that was supposed to be retiring at the end of the year. First up, you have set number 75333, the Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi Jedi Starfighter. Now, this is a very popular set for a lot of resellers out there. I like it. This is something that I could maybe uh, see myself put into my hit list, if you want to call it that. There are some benefits of adding this to your inventory, but this is a set that I know a lot of people have, and unfortunately, they're going to have to wait at least for another year. Next up, set number 75347, the Lego Star Wars TIE Bomber. I like this set a lot. This is a set that retails for $65. You should very easily be able to get this for almost half off if you know what you're doing. This is a very, very cool set. And again, this is going to be pushed out at least one more year to 2025. Next up, the 501st Clone Troopers Battle Pack, set number 75345. Now, I'm curious about this, right? Because there's one more battle pack out there that I believe is slated to retire, and they left that one alone. But it's very similar to, to this one right here. So does that mean that LEGO will decide to push more Star Wars sets out to 2025? I don't know. I really don't think this is the end of it. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens between now and the end of the year. The Coruscant Gunship, set number 75354. Now this right here, to me, honestly, wasn't that much of a surprise. This had a short lifespan. I know there were rumors at one time that this was going to either be a Target or a Walmart exclusive. And it looked like those rumors kind of faded out. And you could pick up this set pretty much anywhere Legos are sold, Right? So for me, it makes sense that this set is going to be pushed out to the end of 2025. It doesn't mean I'm not disappointed, though. I think this is a very, very cool set and eventually it will retire, but not this year. This set right here, the Ghost and Phantom 2, set number 75357. This is one of the sets that I have picked up. I only picked up Quantity 1 this year uh, just as a collector. I like this set a lot. I know there are a lot of people out there that like this set. I know a lot of people out there that don't like this set, and that's interesting. Anytime somebody says they don't like a set, I always want to listen to them and see what the reasons are because they may be considering something that I haven't, and usually that's what happens. And finally, set number 75356, the Executor Superstar Destroyer. Now again, I'm not too surprised about this, but it doesn't mean that I am not disappointed. In my opinion, this set right here and the mini Millennium Falcon are the two best sets out of all the MIDI sets out there. But I like this set a lot. I like all the other MIDI sets a lot when it comes to collectability. And we talk about collectability, right? It may be a few months since I've mentioned it, but we've talked about collectability in the past. If there are a couple Lego sets in a sub theme that somebody picks up and somebody is just now discovering a Lego and you know what it means to be a collector over the age of 18, they're going to look back at Amazon and eBay and they're going to see the Lego sets they missed and they're going to go ahead and pull the trigger on it. 
We've talked about diversification in the past. When it comes to Lego investing, I hate the word diversification because I've said since the beginning of me reselling that if a winner is a winner, why do you need to purchase some other sets, right? But these are examples right here. Diversification is something you absolutely must do. I've talked many times in the past about how I had 350 ATST Raiders. I'm not saying that to you guys because you're my therapist and I'm trying to let it out. I already have a therapist at the VA, so I, I, sh I share with her all my problems. Uh, but I'm sharing the ATST Raider with you every couple of weeks, every couple of months, just so you could see firsthand what that does. And here's the thing, folks. I know one person who was a very successful reseller before COVID. Now they weren't, you know, politely this big fish as I am. And I still don't consider myself a big fish. I know many people out there do, but they were making money. They were putting numbers on the board, right? And they went ahead and they made a mistake similar to the ATST Raider. Now, fortunately for me, I do have thousands and thousands of Lego sets out there. So it wasn't a mortal wound to my business model whenever I pulled the trigger on 350 ATST Raiders because I had thousands and thousands of, of Lego sets, right? I fortunately was able to absorb that, but I do know some Lego resellers out there that don't have as much quantity as I do. And so whenever they pull the trigger and they make a mistake and they don't necessarily diversify, that could be a mortal wound. This Lego reseller has had to put a pause on their business model for a couple of years because they needed to recover, they needed to liquidate their funds, and then they also needed to raise capital before they could go ahead and purchase purchase more Lego sets. So kind of a, not a life lesson, but kind of a Lego reselling lesson. Things change all the time. And if you don't keep up with it, you could potentially be left behind reselling Lego. That's it friends. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, I'm Jim with WolfordBricks.com. Always go out there and get it.